Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to show you guys how to downgrade iOS 9 back to iOS 8.4.1 in case there's a new untethered jailbreak for the firmware that's released prior to the availability of a utility for iOS 9. All right, so getting started, there's a lot I need to preface with in this video. It is going to be more condensed, and if you're already watching this on mobile, definitely stop where you're at and pick it up on desktop because there will not only be annotations down below at the bottom of this video that will allow you to click to skip ahead throughout certain segments of it, but there will also be important status updates along the way, as well as links to various jailbreak updates as they become available in the cards. So again, definitely watch this video on desktop. Also, I am giving an all new iPhone 6s this Friday. Be sure to rate this video up in light of that fact, as well as if you're interested in a new untethered jailbreak, I will definitely keep you guys notified along the way. So click the subscribe button next to my channel name if you have yet to, to be notified for both of those things. Now, with that said, let's get into this. So why would you want to downgrade from iOS 9 back to 8.4.1 if a jailbreak isn't available for either firmware? Well, that's a great question. Essentially, recently, Pangu publicized three new jailbreak exploits, and they did this because they're probably focused on iOS 9. They don't really care about 8.4.1, but these exploits are exclusive to that firmware, meaning they will not function on iOS 9. So in light of that fact, it is possible that other developers may pick up development where Pangu left off and create a new jailbreak for 8.4.1 before we get one for iOS 9. So I decided to create this tutorial to leave the choice to downgrade up to you guys. We really don't know which jailbreak is going to come first though, so again, you can downgrade to iOS 8.4.1, but if you want to, just make sure you do it sooner rather than later, because as soon as Apple stops signing iOS 8.4.1, this tutorial will become irrelevant because you can only restore to an IPSW or firmware file that Apple is currently signing. As of now, they are signing both 9.0 and 8.4.1. On desktop, there will be an annotation letting you know whether Apple is still signing 8.4.1 4.1 making it possible to go back to the firmware or not. Now this tutorial will function on every iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch that's able to update to iOS 9, except newer devices like the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, and the iPad Mini 4 that all ship with iOS 9. Also, one last quick thing before we get into this. You cannot restore from a backup either in iTunes or iCloud that was created on a higher firmware. And what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, once you downgrade to iOS 8.0, 4.1, your data accumulated on iOS 9 will not be restorable. So you'll either need to use an older backup that was created on iOS 8.4.1 or earlier, or simply sign in to iCloud via the settings app, of course, to retrieve as much data as. Now it's not the best solution, but if you don't have an older backup, it's better than nothing. All right, and for this guide, I will have a link down below in the more info to a post on my site, Best Tech Info, that will have everything linked there. You're only going to need to download one thing aside from the the latest version of iTunes, and that is the corresponding IPSW or firmware file for your device. And actually, on Best Tech Info, it will link you directly to this site here, which I highly recommend. It's absolutely great for downloading correct IPSW files. All you have to do is just select your device from this dropdown over on the left, and then find your device. Now, because I have an iPod Touch 6 Gen, I'm just going to select iPod Touch 6. From there, on the right-hand side, you should have a drop-down of various IPSW or firmware files. Now, as you can see, iOS 9.0 as well as iOS 8.4.1 are both green. This is kind of your secondary fail-safe to ensure that Apple is still signing 8.4.1. If it's red like iOS 8.4 is, that means the company is no longer signing it and you cannot restore to it. But as you can see, as of now, we can go back to 8.4.1. So once you have it downloaded, you can continue simply by plugging your device into your computer via a USB cable. Before I do that though, let's quickly take a look inside of the settings app to show you guys that we are indeed on iOS 9. Inside of settings general about down below at the bottom for the version, you'll notice this iPod touch does confirm it is running iOS 9 or 9.0, the latest build. Of course, I also have the news app as well as other indicators that we are on iOS 9, such as the San Francisco font and the 
new wallet app there. All right, so now that we have absolutely everything out of the way, let's plug into our computer via a USB cable and launch iTunes. And as you can see here, iTunes automatically pops up and it gives us this option to set up your new device. You can see it says, welcome to new iPod. That's because I did recently restore it to iOS 9 for this tutorial. If for whatever reason you get this screen when connecting to iTunes, you can just do setup as new device because we're not interested in restoring the data right now. So let's go ahead and just click on continue to that, followed by get started. And then it should just put you inside of the device section of iTunes. If that's not where you are, you need to find your device up at the top. As you can see, here's the iPod and then just click on it and then it will automatically place you there. So we're at the iPod touch screen. Now, before we can restore, we actually have to turn off iCloud's find my iDevice feature because you'll notice here when I try to click on restore, it will just give me this prompt stating that we need to turn off find my iPod touch before we can restore. So I'm going to click OK to that. So launch up the settings app and then scroll down until you find iCloud. Once you find iCloud, scroll to the bottom and you need to go to find my device. As you can see, mine says find my iPod touch. It will be dynamic based on which device you're actually working with here. So I'm going to toggle off find my iPod and it will ask me to input my password. All right, so I tapped on turn off and as you can see, it says turning off find my iPod there. It's successfully finished and now what we need to do is hold down either the option or alt key if we're on a Mac like I am or hold down shift if you're on a Windows based PC. So again, the option alt key if you're on Mac or shift if you're on Windows. And once you do that, you need to left click on restore. So hold down that key on your keyboard depending on which operating system you're on. I'm on Mac, we're holding down option and left clicking on restore. So I do have my iPod Touch 6 Gen iOS 8.4.1 IPSW file here and we need to open it. Now I will say this, if you get an error after you click on open, then that can likely be attributed to one of two things. Either Apple is no longer signing iOS 8.4.1 or you downloaded the wrong IPSW file, in which case you need to go back and download the proper IPSW. So with that said, we're going to click on open here because everything's good to go and we will proceed with this restore. iTunes is now asking me if I'm sure I want to restore my iPod Touch to iOS 8.4.1 and it's stating that it will verify it with Apple. So I'm going to zoom out here and we're going to proceed with this downgrade. So let's go ahead and click on restore here and I'm going to bring the iPod Touch over into view and we're going to let this entire process play through. I'm also going to leave the iPod Touch up on the screen here throughout the duration of it just so you guys can see approximately how long it will take though it may vary for you again based on your device as well as your computer that's why there will be a skip annotation on the desktop version of YouTube that will actually allow you to move forward beyond this point so as you can see we now have a progress bar beneath the Apple logo and inside of iTunes it's simply stating waiting for iPod All right, we do actually have some progress on the iPod Touch here beneath the Apple logo. And just note that the two progress bars inside of iTunes as well as on your device will not align because on iTunes, the progress bar is just reminiscent of the current step that it's on. Whereas on your iPod Touch or your iDevice, it actually represents the entire restore or downgrade process. So that's the one you wanna to refer to if you're looking for the progress of the entire downgrade process. And iTunes right now is actually restoring the iPod Touch 6 Gen software. So we're restoring to 8.4.1 right now in real time.
All right, now iTunes has moved on to verifying iPod restore and the progress bar on the iPod touch is almost complete. So let's go ahead and let this process play through. All right, now as you can see inside of iTunes, we have a message stating that the iPod Touch has been successfully restored and that it will reboot. So let's go ahead and close out of iTunes now and the iPod Touch is just rebooting with an Apple logo. Once it is up, we will actually have another progress bar beneath it. That's fine, that's just the on-device consolidation step. It shouldn't take too long, so just go ahead and let that process complete. By the way, we can actually unplug right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and iTunes just gave a pop-up stating it couldn't connect to the iPod, that's fine. All right, so we have the Apple logo again. Once it's up, we should be at the slide to setup screen and I'm just going to go through the simple and basic on-screen setup. I'm going to be back to show you guys that we are indeed on iOS 8.4.1. All right, so inside of settings general about down below at the bottom for the version, you'll notice this iPod Touch now states that it is running iOS 8.4.1. All right, guys, so that is it for this tutorial. I really do hope you liked it and I hope it helped you downgrade from iOS 9. If it did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you guys are interested in earning paid apps from Apple's App Store as well as gift cards for free, just be sure to navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari and sign up. Once you do it's as easy as downloading some sponsored apps for points and redeeming said points for some great prizes again including paid apps and gift cards all right that's everything for this video be sure to stay tuned for future jailbreak updates again i will keep you guys completely notified regarding everything and if you want to be updated even more often just be sure to like me on facebook and follow me on twitter and until next time this is icu signing out